record on this computer. So and then share screen. We talk, we talk now. Here's the thing. I need to go on tomorrow. I have a difficult scope. Thank you, Mario. So you know, I'm gonna go tomorrow. Tomorrow, perhaps, yes. And during the day, I will set up for you guys a grid scope. And then you know you have to check your email, okay? And then you know from there you can accept and you will make a login and so on. How it works? Basically, I will go here under the course documents. I will put a folder, and this folder will be called quiz. So I can actually make it now. So you need to check tomorrow, or no, on Wednesday about this. So quiz uh, one. Under this quiz one, I'm gonna have multiple file, which is basically the quiz in the Word format or the quiz in the PDF format, and uh, an instruction about how can you use grid scope. It's like a PDF. Okay, grid scope, it's a very well known website here. Grid scope. You know, I will create something and so on. Okay, then you know. You guys, once you know, you will be working on this Word file or you work on the PDF file in a, in a way or other to write your answers between the spaces, I will leave it for you. Like for instance, you know, I know question number one must, most likely will take like one page. Then I will leave for you a blank one page. You will start writing there using the computer, using a stylus on a tablet, you know, whatever you can feel it's more comfortable to you. Then, you know, you will convert everything to PDF and you will go loaded where in grid school. Okay, then in the grade scope, I will go and I will start looking into every single question you're already answering, and I will put you grade there with explanation. And once I would say release, everybody individually will see his grade and he will see every single piece of information I left on the PDF. And if you have any questions, I can go through. That makes sense? Yeah. Also, you know, you're great for the lab one and lab two. I have it here still in a piece of paper. So I'm going to load it into what the, what's called the, the, the grade center, the grading center, whatever. You know. but again, uh, professor, what topics is the quiz going to be? Okay. So basically what we learned so far, we know that 2300 from the 2300, right? We just need to use the knowledge of the Verilog, which is basically the bunch of the statements I give it to you structure modeling versus behavior modeling versus data flow, right? How can you write this bench? How can you make a simulation? Um, uh, how can you use the procedure blocks, like, you know, always block, whether that can be sequential or combinational. Those, all of these are very um, important information, if statements, if you are going into behavior modeling and so on, right? So one of the way I can br bring you a question, it can be the following. I can write a piece of code and I tell you once we synthesize this code, what the circuit equivalents will come out. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. Another so in that case, can we draw it out? Huh? For a question like that, can we just draw it out instead of describing it? You describe it. No, I mean, you draw it. You have to draw it. You have to draw it and then you describe down the drawing. You know, because, you know, end, end of the day, you know, digital logic design has been based on what drawing. Mm -hmm. Right? So for instance, you know, one of the things that, you know, I, of course, I appreciate all of you guys' great work with uh, Lab 1 and Lab 2, but one of the things that was a little bit confusing, I asked it in the lab uh, video, recorded video of the lab uh, assignment to give me like a diagram of the design. And instead, you guys, what you already have done for some of you, I'm not saying all of you, you just took a copy of whatever the circuit came out from the very long. That is not correct. Why? For a reason. First of all, are you writing the code for writing the code or you are writing a code for describing your design? Describe design. Exactly. So what does it mean? You read an assignment, right? Or you will look into a video I, uh, I recorded, right? Then you will start analysis backward. What is uh, exactly he wants? For instance, in the, uh, in the first lab, right? I came into a point say that, you know, I have two set of switches. And when I change these values, it will go into one section of LED. But then you know there is another switch will allow me to push the data from that set of LED to another set of LED. If I am you and I would like to analysis what is going on, I will make a box like this, right? 
this box it has two inputs set of switches and two outputs set of leds right then how many switches for controlling two so i put two of them then i will start thinking about what is the circuit inside this black box then i will draw the circuit and after i draw the circuit i will start individually write the the code associated for it then i will start combining them together into top.v which is a file that's called top.v right and then i will write my test bench if i would like to test the whole entire system i will give you an example right so the last lab i give it to you while i was building it i made some mistakes so we are humans right so i figure out my mistakes by what i made individual test bench every single block i made its own test bench then when i combine everything together i make a bigger test bench to check everything connected to each other then i found my error and after that i deployed on the chip if it, it worked that makes sense so the problem i noticed so far you guys are taking this course as just a language like in c right you know bunch of statements you just go and write you see it doesn't work like that this is a language exactly like what you used to do in the 2300 when you were in the lab when you're in the lab what did you do you say oh you know here is the assignment you will look to the breadboard and you start bringing the pieces right the ic's and then you will start putting the ic's into this little holes in the breadboard then you bring the what's called the wires based on the diagram you made on the piece of paper and you will start connecting it then you will push the sources of the power and voltages and then you will see everything is turning on and playing that makes sense yeah but uh, professor about the labs can you please post them like on wednesday because like this lab we have i understand but you know um there was some uh, technical problem with my computer so it was it was out of my control. of course i wanted to post it for you before even when it was but, but i will do my best you know maybe i can work on it in the weekend for a couple of weeks and just like you know leave it with the uh, timer so there will be a timer on the blackboard it will release it automatically and everyone is there oh, okay yeah yeah that would be great actually okay but you know honestly the example i give it to you for the lab stream is very easy so the lab stream is basically a decoder just a decoder with a clock divider yeah i mean i told you how it, i told you the ingredient now you need to think about how can you connect them together right um Yes. Professor, so ju just to clarify on what's happening Wednesday, uh, it's we are taking the quiz during the class time. No, so we are not. The, okay. The, the class time, you guys will come into a group also uh, every ten minutes. As a group, you will present your uh, uh, the circuit thing, the report, and the demo, and the whole thing. Uh, and for lab for lab number three, yes. Exactly. Okay. Then you know you have the whole entire day until midnight of that Wednesday to load your answers for the quiz uh, number one uh i see okay so, professor like the quiz actually if if it was in class how long would it be like what would be the time for it 30 okay. minutes here's the thing normally the quiz should take half an hour yeah midterm should take one and a half hour yes one fifteen minutes right but because the pandemic and all of the stress on you guys i just wanted to stretch it for you to be the whole entire day Oh, okay, but like this quiz, the level of the quiz, if it was in class, it would be a 30 minute quiz. <laughs> I understand what you're talking about. You're talking are, about you're the, the difficulty. About the difficulty level. So, you uh -huh, know, uh -huh. the entire day, the minute gonna be. Ah, uh, uh, I mean, it's, I'll just no, be no, honest, no, no. it's no, pretty gonna, common with I'm you guys. Not, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be harsh with you. I mean, the level of uh, complexity i'm gonna make it like you know gradually what does it mean quiz number one quite easy myth number one it will be a little bit difficult you know quiz number two it will be a little bit more difficult mid number two will be more and more difficult so you would be fully prepared for the final that makes sense wow that sounds like a really hard final <laughs> it's not hard final at all anyway don't worry i promise you know if you understand the recipes of the verilog if you understand 2300 they're gonna be a piece of paper I just want you, you guys to know 99% of industry nearby us are using Verilog and VHDL and system Verilog. How many of you are in favor of working for Jet Proportional Lab? 
Probably me. You mean like the jet propulsion? I think there's like a group on on campus, no? That does, that works with the jet propulsion, no? Yes, I mean, I, work, I mean, I do work with them. I already got a grant from them, mm -hmm. from not from jet propulsion, from NASA itself. Because jet propulsion is a little bit weird, though, you know. It's like something. It's not hundred percent NASA. It's not hundred percent Caltech. It's something in the middle, you know. No, yeah, I mean, I mean, like all, all like uh, engineering, especially like embedding wise, is tackled and, using Verilog. And exactly, like, exactly, yeah, exactly. And exactly. Just, yeah. And they're gonna appreciate you a lot. So if you guys are doing, if you guys, if you guys are doing a really great job on using Verilog, and you really learn every single trick in the Verilog, you will, you will be hired in one of those places. Like you know, there is also NASA centers everywhere. You know, it doesn't need to be just uh, California. California is really expensive in terms of like you know, cost of living, right? And also, you know, I can also talk to you about multiple other places, you know, if you want. Like, you know, uh, National Labs. They are really looking for talented people like you guys. Like, you know, have you guys heard about one is called LNLL? Lawrence have Livermore National yes. Laboratory. Yes, yes, yes. There is, have you guys heard about this one? LANL? Los Alamos National Lab. Have you guys heard about this one? Sandia Lab. Have you guys heard about this one? BNL, Brookhaven National Lab for the Nuclear Facility in the United States. Have you guys heard about this one? Um, Oak Ridge National Lab. It has the most efficient supercomputer on Earth. Where is that? Are using, all of those guys are using Verilog and System Verilog. And where, where is the Oak Ridge? At Tennessee. Oh. Uh, have you heard about Aragon? Oregon Lab, it's in uh, Chicago. Have you heard about this one, Fermi? Fermi Lab, it's a nuclear facility in Illinois. 45 minutes by car from uh, uh, Oregon Lab. Are these all subsets of the DOE? Huh? All of are them these... are DOE and DOE. Okay. So, you know, uh, Sandia, uh, DOD. Uh, yeah, Sandia, no, half, half, I'm sorry. Uh, Lano, even it works for the nuclear uh, nuclear facility, but it's DOE, Department of Energy. United States have 18 national labs, belong to the DOE, Department of Energy. And it has almost, I don't know, that wise of the this number for the DOE, Department of Defense. And they will look for workforce coming from you guys. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, just take it really serious, okay? One of the things also I want you guys to remember, do you remember the timing we discussed? Do you remember the set of time and hold time? Yeah. So set of time and hold time, please practice on this. From your point of view, what is the problem with set of time and hold time? Just equation, right? Yes. If you remember the equation, you will be able to finish the whole thing, right? Another point about the set of time, hold time thing. Do you remember when we defined the passes between the input and output? Can you say that again, Professor? Do you remember the passes between the input and output? Like uh, yes. And output, yes, passes, yes. Right. So this is something the STA does, right? Which is the static timing analysis. Do you remember that? And we said the violation, there is no violation, and you would check the critical path, and then you know, based on the critical path, you will be able to define the maximum uh, frequency, right? Oh, the critical path, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of those, all of those guys, please, you know, just uh, review it. Think about it again. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Also, one of the things I need to mention, I noticed some of you. I'm not gonna say names, but you know, some of you have some problems between syntax using for RTL and syntax using in uh, in uh, simulation. Okay. Let's say what is this? Some syntax are using for what? RTL. What is RTL? Do you guys remember? Lewis, do you remember RTL? It's the, reg the register transfer level. Exactly. Thank you. Which is basically what? It's basically all the code we wrote, which at the end of the day, it will be deployed on this board, right? Mm -hmm. So 
those those set of uh, synthesis tools are dealing with a specific uh, functionality or syntax for Verilog, not used for simulation. So for instance, one of you guys, I'm not gonna also say the name, came and you know he made the generating clock in, in, in the simulation using always block and a positive edge of the clock, which is not correct. This is a procedural block. It has to be used in where? On the RTL. How you use the always block in the simulation, you have to use it. Somebody tell me. It's just always block begin end. Right? Something else. Do you remember this timing, the delay we, I, I added the initial block in the simulation? It's forbidden to be used in RTL. RTL will not understand this. So what is my advice to you? Can you please do me a favor and you know, scan fast all of the recorded videos I shared with you since we started the course? That would be fair enough to show you what is the set of codes will be dedicated for RTL versus set of codes will be dedicated for simulation. That makes sense? Okay. One of the things I can ask you, which is really easy, right? Build one bit full adder using majority, majority encoder. Have you ever heard about this question? One bit full adder. Using majority the... encoder and bunch of NAND gates. So the majority encoder is to have the carry out. So the carry out will be the carry out will be the majority encoder. See, so it's a tricks coming from two different courses. It's not just one course, right? So maybe I can just start sharing with you some ideas you might see, right? Martin, Martin, Martin. Anyway, let's see. Ah, need to be sharp. Anyway, so let's talk more, you know, and then, you know, while this thing is there, pop out, and, you know, we can start drawing circles. Also, I didn't give you one thing which I was waiting a little bit until you guys will get used to the four loops and so on. I noticed you guys are afraid of the four loop. Somehow. Do you guys agree with me? I, I think the four loop's fine. So what about the rest of you? I, I just would like to know, because this is basically the ABC for the girl. So what is the majority of you try to make it manually by hand? I, that's what I know, right? Like, you know, you bring the block. I got confused using uh, a sign with a full loop. Yes, that's, you are right. So I, we're gonna go through this. Uh, another point, why you guys don't like full loop? Maybe somebody can give me another explanation. So we can work on this and fix it. That's also a very good question. So we can do two examples out of this because you know modeling sense structures, you know, the so confused with loops are behavior and uh, which are structure. Good. For, for generate is not about behavior or structure. For generate is a way of the continuation. Like you build a block, you know, equip, you know, let's say you are playing with Lego, right? And the Lego you already have 15 pieces are similar, right? And those pieces, you have to sort them into a big line. So if you will do it by your hand, it's time consuming. Do you agree? And also it will be quite hard for you to track it back. So the for loop generate, it's not just for loop, it's called generate and genvar was for loop. And the combination between all of those guys will help you to do it what automatic. So you cannot 100% consider the for generate as behavior. Also, I noticed something. You guys have a little bit confused, a little bit confusing against, you know, what is structure versus what is the uh, data flow, what is the difference with behavior, right? This is what I noticed from lab one and lab two. And we need to work on this. So I'm not sure where is Vado. I'm just turning over Vado here. This is stuff, you know, we need to be slowly taking it into our consideration. And then we you know we would work on the third way of building clock divider. You guys remember when I told you I'm gonna do show you this? We're gonna make what a clock divider 
using the third way. So the first way we learned for the clock divider, somebody tell me, we use what? PLL, right? Do you guys remember the PLL? Yes, yes, Ashley, you're right, the clock wizard. And we found out in the clock wizard, there is two different instantiation we can use coming from the easy part of the chip, which is what, MMCM and PLL. The only one we actually dealt was, it was what, PLL, right? Which is a phase lock uh, lock, phase lock lock generator. It's uh, an analog circuit on board. We are calling it with a digital interface coming to uh, provide us magnification or amplification of the, of the current uh, XDC clock we have. And the time, you know, we have 100 megahertz, if you remember from the XDC. So we can jump up to four, 600 megahertz, something like that. But then, you know, if you want to go beyond the 600 or 500, I'm sorry, you have to use the MMCM. We didn't have a real application for this yet, right? We can even uh, attenuate the maximum frequency using the PLL up to six or seven megahertz. But it can go, it cannot go down than that, right? The, the second approach we learned for building a clock divider, if you guys remember, we can make n-bit counter, right? And we'll figure out there is a simple equation saying that you know the single bit of the counters is basically the maximum frequency divided by two power n. You guys remember that? Hello. Hello. Yeah, you should actually rewatch because you know that's basically what we were talking about for a long time. Anyway, so what I want to say is the following, right? Um, the the clock divider I said it's basically a bit counter. Maybe I can start sharing and you know remind you. But you know, please, you know, the trick is to watch the video. You know, even you know, unfortunately, we are in this pandemic situation. Hopefully, it will not last forever. Um, the the good thing about you know teaching the course online. Teaching online, it's uh, or virtual as you can call. The good thing that we have a recording, right? And in a recording, you have your infinity way of watching the same thing over and over and over. Do you agree? Before, with the traditional way of teaching, you know, we have a big problem, right? If you would like to remember some something, some sort of stuff, you know, it's really hard for you to go ahead and do it unless you know, you know, you, you know, you, the instructor allowed you to record something, right? So here, you know, uh, um, right, Rohit, you know, here I would say, so the, the PLL, PLL, it's instantiated by the clock wizard under the IP catalog, right? And there is an example and video already recorded be, uh, belong to this part. And we said, you know, what I'm expecting, you already have two different approach, PLL and MMCM. And this one we never use, and we might use, it depends. So when we make a clock in our uh, code, the PLL is involved, it depends which one you want. I'm gonna show you, there's three different ways. The second way, uh, the PLL, it gives you a wrench up to 600 megahertz or 500 megahertz, I don't remember the top of my head, up to six megahertz. You cannot go below this, you cannot go above that. Even the source of the PLL, it was 100 megahertz, which is the uh, embedded oscillator on your board. It's a clock inside the board. It's not external board. There is a external, uh, I'm sorry, external uh, clock. There is a way to actually have an external circuit providing you a clock. Did you see those guys? The black thing on my, um, everybody can see my camera, right? Did you see this little guys? The, this one is called PMOD. It's called P M O D P mod. This one, peripheral module systems here, those. You can actually have a wire 
connected to an external circuit, and this external circuit has a crystal, which is whatever range of the maximum frequency you can generate. And from there, you can pass it through the XDC part. That's one of the way you can do it. The other way we, we talked about is basically to build a counter. And this counter, it has a clock. It has a reset. And it has an n bit uh, representation. Then if I take the n bit like this with a multiplexer, from there with a switch, whatever I will select out of this, it will be a new clock. And this clock, it will be 2 power f2 power 1, f2 power 2, and so on up to 2 f2 power n. That makes sense? And I made this an uh, example for you guys. I don't remember. I think it was the last week. You can look at it, OK? The other way is basically the following. Imagine this is theoretical I'm going to talk about, and then you know we can make an example. Here is the desired clock. So this is basically the clock I'm actually wanted, requested. And here is the actual clock I have. So what I can do, if I would like to go from here to there, pretty much think about the following. The clock, if you look in the structure, right? The clock, how it works. The clock is basically a period of time. The on is equivalent to the off, right? This is called this T on, and this is T off, right? And this is T. You can write very simple, because this is a clock, right? You can say T on is equal T off is equal T divided by two. That make sense? So, yes, imagine the following. I'm just imagine the following. Somebody's telling you, somebody's telling you, build me a system, build me a system, and the system that, you know, will provide me a clock, and this clock, the on is 100 nanosecond, while the off is also 100 nanosecond. So far, so good? And what I can learn out of this, somebody tell me. That means T of this is 200 nanosecond. <coughs> that makes sense? So what does it mean? It means the maximum frequency of this is 1 over 200 nanosecond. Somebody tell me what is this in megahertz will be? That can be easy. 10 power minus 9 and 10 power 2. Chiser. 10 power 2 and then you know 1 and 2. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, like this. Right? So we are talking about what? You are talking about half and you are talking about 10 power 7. So megahertz is what? It is 10 power 6, and they're going to be 5. So you know, basically, you know, Sean is right. It's going to be 5 megahertz. So maybe I can make you a very nice question. What is this question? Here's a phone. If we have 100 uh, megahertz, the XDC, OK, Sean? So 100 megahertz, what does it mean, 100 megahertz? So you know, my source. So I have a box like this. This box, it has um, 100 megahertz. And this box, it has output 5 megahertz. And I need to know what is the circuit would be inside this. Do you agree? It's a very easy thing. Why it's a very easy thing? Somebody tell me. I can tell you. Because the following, 100 megahertz, that means you know, the duration of the clock is what? Huh? 10 nanoseconds. So that means this is going to be 1 over 100 megahertz, which is equal to 10 nanoseconds. Pretty much, this is 5 nanoseconds, and this is 5 nanoseconds. So I can return it back here and say, oh, I want to be from 5 nanoseconds to be 100 nanoseconds. 
So I can imagine what I can make a clock counter. <coughs> you agree? Huh, somebody tell me. We need a counter. And this counter will be weird. Why? Because it will take 100 divided by 5 and it gives me what? 20. So I, it needs to count 20 times. 20 is 20 count. Each count is what? 5, right? So count here. Count, 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 20. And then from there it will start what? Huh? Counting invertible. What does it mean? I will, I will make a signal and I will call it the clock out. And I will be sure this one, it will be high in this 20 cycles. Then it will be low in 20 cycles. Then it will be high in 20 cycles. Then it will be low in 20 cycles. What I'm saying, it makes sense? Hello? Rest of the people. I would like to be sure that everybody understands me. I don't mind to take the whole entire lecture in one piece of information. The most important that everybody will understand. So it doesn't count when clock is low. No, 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 no. It's still time. You understand with me? You know, you understand me, Ra? So think about it like this, right? I have here 100, look. I have here 100 nanoseconds, and I have here 100 nanoseconds. You agree with me? Now, if I go ahead and say like this, this is a piece of time or not? So that at the end of the day, gonna be what, 10 nanoseconds. Ah, sorry, not, not 10, I'm sorry, five. You see, you know, we make it here five, five on, right? So it's gonna be here five as a whole cycle. Then five, no, sorry, you're right, 10. I'm sorry, you're right, 10. So it's gonna be here 10, 10, 10. So I need 10 times on, 10 times off. So here, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that signal will be on. Then I need another 10, the signal will be off. Then another 10, it will be on. Then another 10, it will be off, and so on. You just need what? Another counter counting with the, the clock of the main thing, which is the 100 megahertz. That's basically the general rules people use. You can come into multiple equation. You can come and say that, you know, F desired divided by F, uh, or F required divided by F available. And then, you know, you will come into the, what duration by count, you divide it by two, you can get how many on, how many off at the same. That makes sense? It's not resetting. It's not about resetting. Basically, you know, when there, it's not about resetting. It's basically a piece of time. You're accelerating time here, like time, time, time. I'm taking this amount of time. I'm taking this amount of time. It's like, you know, you're putting a little bit piece of Lego to continue it, right? So my question to everybody, everybody understood what I'm saying so far? Lois, Justin? Go ahead. Edwin? Okay. So far, so good. So, we have now three different ways. We programmed the first two and the third one we didn't make. That's not really hard. We can make it with what? A very beast counter. But before we do this, have you ever heard about something that's called define? So this is something we can use to define a constant. <coughs> so we define what a constant. Sound good? How can we do it is like this, define. And we call it here constant, for instance, space. And then you know we put here like eight, H, uh, four, five. What does it mean? Make a constant, it's called constant, and put this equal to 45 in hertz. And that will be in a way above of the module. Then you know I can call it into the counter, say compare with this, and it will figure it out. That's one of the way. Okay? And that's something new you learn. Before this to learn, 
I need to mention something. I noticed you guys, maybe one of you, came and made this always at like that. You got this from the internet somehow, right? This one, it's a little bit dangerous. Again, this one is a little bit what dangerous and tricky. Why? It might make you in simulation looks really great, but in the realization, it does it does give a problem. So let's actually analyze what is this, right? How can we analyze this? We can just think about it as follows, right? I'm building. A uh, multiplexer, right? And this multiplexer is called select here, and then you know zero and one, I zero, I one, and here is the output. It's called O. Okay. We can build this using what a structure model. So let's let's see what does the structure mean. The structure means that you know I need multiple gates to build this. Do you guys agree? I'm just repeating again. Structure, what does it mean? It means I know from the 2300 that I need N gate with the I0 with a select here um, like this. And then I need like this, another N gate with the I1. And then I need an OR gate to bring me the output like that. And that's basically my multiplet. Everybody agree about the circuit? So when it comes to say that I want to build it structural, that means I'm gonna make it literally structural, like you know, with the gates. That's called git level implementation or structure model. Make sense? So in that case, I can just come and say this is called T1, this is called T2, and then I say you know T, you know, and T1 I0, and um, uh, let's call this uh, X N for instance. I will just call this X. Before that, you know, um, uh, not, and then, you know, you say X and, and select. And then, you know, after that, you know, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and say N T2 select with I1. Then, you know, you come and say OR, and then OB, and then, you know, uh, uh, T1, what I did in front of you is what? Completely structure with Git level. You understand me now? Hello? Why is structure is important? Somebody tell me, why is structure is important? Why we are bothering with structure? Even there is behavior. Behavior describe relations between input and output. Behavior describe relation between input and what? Output. That means it describe functionality. But don't forget the synthesizer, the guy on the FBGA, the one making the power and look at tables and flip them, stuff like that. It's not that really smart. So sometimes it's actually miscommunicate and then you know it will give you wrong answer or it can give you the right answer but it's not optimized so structure is very good for what optimization why because i can still build this multiplexer using different way which is also going to be behavior so give an example for behavior so you can come and say you know i can describe it like this i say always at then always add it come and say that what are the possible inputs are an influence of changing the output so if i look i0 is an input i1 is an input but those guys are pretty much moving into the output under the control of select so i have to go into that always block and decide what is the most important signals the routing systems of the, uh, the synthesizer have to take it into consideration with the select Make sense? And then you come and say he begin. And you come from here and say yes. So 
So what I did, I built a skeleton of a combinational circuit using what? Always block, procedure or always block. I can make it with many things. One of the way that I taught you, it's called case. And you see here, select. And then, you know, you show to what cases we have, like zero. And then, you know, in that area, we say output is equal by zero. One output is equal I one. And then default output is equal, uh, let's say I zero, I one is single bit. You just make it like, you know, output is equal uh, one B Z as an open space. What I build here is called what structure, uh, sorry, behavior. Model. So far so good? There is another way I can do it. But before we go to the another way, I just want you to think about something, right? Now, one of you mentioned before about this star thing, right? This thing, right? So if I remove select here, let's have a different color. And put here star, guess what will happen for the router? The router will come and say, Muhammad said, oops, you know, I zero and I one and select are very important to be involved inside the overflow. So then you know what we actually extend now, we extend the difficulty of routing. You know what is routing, right? Routing means that you know, if you have here in the, in the breadboard four ICs like this, and you would like to connect between those guys, let's say that you know, those guys are connected like that, and you want to connect between this and this, this and this. So how are you gonna do it? Physically, you can do it like this. There's one way or you can connect it like that. That's another way. Or you can connect it like this. So if you keep increasing what is important and what is not important, and there's a ton of other things that you know that a compiler is taken into consideration, you are confusing who? The compiler, because you know, the compiler is looking for the best routing. That means the shortest routing between the two points. So you are confusing him. Yes, simulation work, yes, the code looks really great for you, but in reality, uh, gonna be a big mess. So I would recommend, I know that you know it, just know it for yourself, but you know, you will use what the important signals, which is our critical signals for what exchanging the value. Because you know, what is the definition of always blob? Always blob is looking for the sensitivity list in the bracket. And the sensitivity lets any changes happen in, in that signal, then you know all these cases will be inactive. I'm gonna stop here and ask. You guys are following me? Yes. Is it now clear? Much better. Yes, yes. It's not to the schematic, it's not schematic. It's into the routing. So you know, implementation routing. Maybe now in front of you, it looks super cool. Maybe the, you know, the compiler is very smart with new generation of compilers and it will figure it out because you know that 3300, we are not building huge circuit, right? But once we are building huge circuit, the compiler will come and say, he will give some answers. You might actually don't need it. And that will cause what? Unrouting. Uh, a route uh, and routing something important and routing something is not important. We shouldn't use it. Even in, a, in you know, in the level of the 5300, I'm not asking you to build a huge circuit, right? That makes sense? Anyway, let's build, let's build something else also using the behavior model. So behavior model also is this. That's not really hard. You can use it with F statement, right? So you can come and say, all oh, always add and you will go here select and then you know begin and begin and and then you will come and say you know if select and we said when I do this that mean is equivalent to select equal equal one do you remember do you remember the first patch slide that I give it to you 
and it has all of this, right? Then what I meant by this, if I have a multiple things under the if statement, I have to use begin and end. But if I'm just like working in one line, I just need, uh, I don't need it. So in that case here, I don't need it. So I say OB is equal uh, uh, I1. And then I say else, and then OB is equal to I2. So I also use a different way of building the multiplexers. <coughs> using the multiplexers for building what? For building the multiplexers. Make sense? Are you guys following me? Hello. Yes. Is it easy, busy, lemon, squeezy? Now, if I want to build it using data flow, data, <coughs> data flow, part of <coughs> is using the assign. When I assign value, I assign it to wire. Do you guys agree? So that means the thing, it should be wired. So pretty much, you know, I can imagine that I have module and that module here, this is a sign of state, okay? So you guys don't take it like, you know, it's something you have to find in the keyboard. This is mean space, okay? Let's say, you know, I'm calling team marks. And I have here the, um, I will follow the way I use it in my divide like this. I say, you know, input. Uh, I zero, I one, and then input, select, and then you know output, uh, and it's a wire, and it's called OP. Since my output is wire, since my output is wire, what should I do? Huh? Now I will go and assign like here, assign. Output is equivalent, and I will start using the operators we learn from the data flow tracks, which is basically um, uh, select. That means, you know, what happened here is basically negated of the select, ended with uh, I0, or with the select, ended with I1, and in one, one sentence, we close the multiplexer. That makes sense? And then you come here and see end module. Have you guys seen any of the delay thing? Of course you can use assignment. If you are dotted flow or you know, you use it, you know. Of course you can use it. Of course. Did you see I, I don't use it like all the time, right? I use it for wire. Let's have another example which it doesn't need assignment, right? And then I will show you something called conditional operators, but you know, I'm taking it one by one. So let's go into the, <clears throat> the other options, you know, which doesn't need assign, okay? Can we go over assign again? Of course. Look, now, you know, I said I want to build the multiplexer, right? So I wrote the code in front of you. I'm not using the value now, right? And I said here the multiplexer. I'm expecting the I0 and I1 are to be input. And I put them in one line because at the end of the day, they are what? Single bits, right? So they are the same representation in terms of number of bits, right? Then, you know, I put another input for select and I put here output and the outputs, normally it can be register or wired. Do you remember the data type that was in the early, early, early of the course, right? When we said the data type, it's basically wires, uh, data select and so on, right? Those things. No, 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 a sign is not structure, a sign is data flow. Assign, assign, you know, if you remember in the lab, what I said in the lab, I said use data flow or use a structure. It depends, you know, my, you know, my, the language I use in the video, you should follow, right? Like I say, you know, structure, you know, data flow mix. Okay. Anyway, so back to uh, Tristan. So anyway, I said here wire. So at the end of the day, it's a wire. OB is a wire, right? 
So now I said, assign to the wire. What? I want to make one big statement finishing the multiplexer. Do you agree? So in there, here is this OR gate. You can find this in the patch of slides I give it to you, the beginning of the definition of the Verilog and so on. And this is NOT gate, and this is end gate. So basically, you know, I can look at my, sorry about being fast, they look, it's a NOT gated of select, ended with I0, right? And then, you know, OR with uh, other combination. Same thing, oh, in one line. Make sense? Okay. Now, I want to make another example for not having a sign. So example like, you know, I want to build a register. And this register, of course, if you guys noticed, and I think one of you told me before in the lab one or so, I tried to build a flip-flop using gates and it turned to be latching, right? So pretty much, we, in, for convenience, we, when we built a sequential circuit, we tried as much as we can to do what? To use the behavior. So example, I say that, you know, module and rec, I just call it rec. And we know this language is the case sensitive. That means, you know, lower, upper is different. So at the end of the day, I would say here, input, clock, reset, And then you know input you can set, and then you know we say here um, input, and then you know here it's four to zero, uh, make it three to zero, and then you call it secret D, and then output. Since my intention of this to be register, so the data type of the output should be what right, right? And then you know three to zero, and say here open. <coughs> Sound good? Now I need to start using this tool. So basically, you know, it's a rig, so I have to use always blocks. Always at, and then here. We said the most important signal. We're not going to use a star. Do you agree? So here is a positive edge of the clock. And you can actually put some information like an or, you write or like this and say positive edge of the reset. And then, you know, begin, and here end. In any sequential circuit, which one is most important signals? Which one is very important? The control signals. What control we have? The time control, which is the clock, and the reset, which is basically getting the initialization of the state, right? Sequential, that means we have to start from something, right? Sequential, that means we start from something and then we change. That's sequential, right? So in that case, I can come and say F, reset. Then I would say what will happen? OB is equal zero. Have you noticed something? There I was using the num blocking blocking, right? So here, you know, it's a sequential thing because I'm afraid about everything to happen in time. So I start using this sign, which is the great less than equal, right? Then I say here else if the reset is not happening, then you know it's opening for me to do whatever I want. I can make it very straightforward to be like OB, and then you know I can equal D, right? So translating this, if I run synthesis, it will be what? It will be a, a, a clock, and it's very obvious that it's gonna be positive H, so this is the sign. And then you know I go here to be D, which is basically four bit, and the output here, it will be four bit, and it's called OB. And then, you know, we have here, reset. And that's called what? Direct. So what I did now, I in front of you wrote a code for the, I have to say in module. Huh? I wrote a code for you, and this code, it was for a sequential circuit, and is using behavior modeling. And also I translated to you, what does it mean? in term of use in society. So far so good? Is it clear to everybody? Yes. Sure. So 
Do you remember, do you remember the documentation of the blocking, non-blocking or not? You should have it. I already give it to you. Huh. Somebody, what is blocking? What is non-blocking? Tell me. Do you guys remember blocking, non-blocking? Hmm. When I say blocking, this is blocking. When I say non blocking, this is non blocking. Okay. Blocking, just equal. Non blocking, you know, less than equal. What is those are just, you know, it looked like a same meaning but they are different in the synthesizing. So for instance, you know, circuit, which is combinational, it has to be using block. Again, so combinational using block. Um, sequential using non-block. There is a reason for that because you know non-blocking it depends on timing. Like you know, you came here into the always block and you state a ton of stuff, like x is equal y, y is equal z, z is equal f, and whatever. Definition in the behavior it does it doesn't it doesn't fit to that because you know the parallelism exactly. Thank you. You yeah, worry about the parallelism. You yeah, worry about the parallelism. So. Again, so if you say that, you know, blocking, non-blocking, you have to be careful. For the sequential, you have to go for the, for the behavior thing, which is the non-blocking. Why? Because in blocking, if you have a certain bunch of time, like the series of time, and you said a bunch of them came into sequential like this, you say A is equal C, D is equal D, F is equal N, whatever, right? So what does it mean? In blocking, it means all of this will happen at the same period of time. But for non-blocking, you are saying this will happen, then this will happen, then this will happen, then this will happen. That makes sense? I give you an example of non-blocking. Let's give you an example. So example of gonna be here is called module. And this module, I will call it non-blocking. And I will call here clock A and C and close it like this. I would say here input and put it gonna be clock and um, input is gonna be clock input is gonna be A and um, output is gonna be C and of course it's gonna be weak. Then <coughs> Uh, a and B and C. Then I can just come and say, and here I need what I need extra. Uh, I will here say internal, internal signals, and I will call here rig B. That's what. So what I did so far, I have three inputs: a uh, clock and A and C. And I define it clock as an input, A as an input, and you know C as an register C. And then you know I came out with internal signal called B, and I it's basically I define it as a uh, as a what as a as a register. Then I came here and I say always at positive edge of the clock again, and from there I say. <clears throat> okay, then I would say B is equal A, and then I will come and say B is equal A and C is equal. B. What is the circuit after the synthesis will be look like? We have here is non-blocking as you can see. So in that case, you know, I'm doing what I'm actually building a a counter, uh, sorry, a flip flop like this, and this flip flop is basically clocked. And basically, the A is going to be equal to B. 
then I will take this one and I will just go ahead and say that's gonna be uh, C here. And then, you know, I will just have the problem. So did you see what happened? I made it. Which one, which one? You mean here? Go ahead. This is sequentially. I'm just gonna give an example. Oh, no, 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 it's equal with this. So in this case, they would be both blocking? Both of them is not blocking here, right? You remember I said, I, I, I called the, even the module not blocking, right? Yeah. Both? Again? Okay, so when, when that yeah. sign is oh, here. Because you know, it's confusing. Blocking is like this, not blocking. It's like that. Okay, so what this does is basically just prevent it from going over that, that's it? Yeah, just to make it very clear for you now because it's a little bit confusing. Don't use the equal in sequential search. Use it for combination of search. Got it. What is equal is basically uh, long. What is not, you know, less than or equal, this is not blocking. Why? Basically, in, in the, if you use blocking and non-blocking, if you use blocking, like, you know, equal, under the clock, that means you are saying everything it has to happen in the same time. So you are what? You are putting stress on the compiler to make something is called risk condition. What is risk condition? It's like, you know, you have two wires, right? And those two wires have to be equal to something. And then you are come and say that, you know, can you please connect this two wires at the same time to the output? So you are causing what a big problem here. You might be actually in your head, see it will be the output, but somehow the compiler will make you be the output. What does it say underneath output? Here? Nothing. Let me clean it. Uh, if you scroll up, if you scroll up by where it says um, output C and then it has a semicolon, and what does it say? R E S. This one? Oh, right, right. This one. Yeah, right. The resist. Right. Yeah. Output rig. Right. So that means. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so you understand what I'm saying now? Is it clear for everybody? Where do you state your variables? So is it clear now, everybody? You cannot go into, you know, what is the problem with sequential from your point of view? Sequential doesn't work on the whole entire clock. Do everybody agree with me? Sequential work in events, right? You understand? Again, so sequential come and say, here's my clock, right? Sequential work in this, see this little itty tiny, you know, it's like this. It's not down on that clock. So that means, you know, you are coming in a very small itty bitty time out of time and say, you know, go ahead and make everything work. <laughs> it's basically like, you know, which one gonna be finished first? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, because do you remember the, do you remember the setup time and the whole time? Everybody remember? Oh. Oh. Yes. Do you remember when we said there is amount of time here and there is amount of time there? <laughs> and we said, you know, if you go, if you go more than that, it's perfectly fine. If you are less than that, then you're gonna go and meet the stability. Then you know, if you go beyond than that, it's still fine. But if you are less than that, also meet the stability. So this period of time, don't ask too much for the circuit because the circuit will be confused. That's why, you know, we prefer everything to be relaxed. Use non -block. You mean him? 
No, no, no. I just make a general rule. As much as you can use uh, num blocking for sequential circuits. Otherwise, you will be uh, tiring yourself. Also, it's very good. I will tell you an example, uh, Chris. So basically, you know, if you know the module you build is not the only module you are building in the circuit. Do you agree? So if you look to it by itself, you're right. It doesn't matter, block and non-block, right? But the problem, you're building a big circuit, right? Like lab one, right? You end up having demultiplexer with multiplexer, right? If you look to the multiplexer, it's a, it's a circuit. If you look the demultiplexer, it's a circuit. But when you combine them together, you're building a bigger one, right? Then the compiler will come actually and not look to them as a pieces. They're going to look to them to one big piece. And you know, the problem will happen. That's called maintaining synchronization between modules. Because end of the day, you are not just playing with one piece, you are building a huge circuit. But of course, while you are building, you are building by pieces small and you put them together, build them together and you build a bigger one. Now, make more sense? Okay, so now, I need to share with you something which is called conditional of Verilog. And that's very straightforward. So let me see how can I do because I have some slides in front of me, I can tell you. Let me see, I have the slides. I'll share it with you one second. Where is my slides? Where are my slides? Courses. Uh, so it's the hundred. <coughs> Excuse me. Might be here. Okay, let me share with you this. Share. Okay, there is something also we can use. Later, I will give you the patch of slides. So, there is something also we learn, which is called conditional statement. Conditional state. What is conditional statement? It's still also under the assign. Okay, still using assign. So, that means you know we are assigning into what? Somebody tell me, we are assigning into what wire, right? We agree that we cannot assign for registers, right? So what is the conditional scold? Let's say that you know we assign, assign to what signal name. I'm just giving now a like a general definition. And then here the condition with the quotation. And then you know we say expression if it's true and expression. If it's false, expression if it's true, expression if it's false. <laughs> Did you see that? Example for example. If I have a multiplexer like this, pretty much conditional is a multiplexer, right? Multiplexer is actually a very good, obvious example for what conditional. Do you guys agree? Why? Because you know, I0, I1, 0, 1, and I say select. The conditional coming for where? Select. Do you guys agree? Everybody agrees with me? So if select happens, that means one. So one for me is equivalent to true, and zero for me is equivalent to false. So let's map this into the statement. 
So in that case, I'm going to write assign OB equivalent. And where is the condition? It's a condition. Condition is select. Then, I'm sorry. Then I will go ahead like this with the quotation mark. And you know, where is true? It should be here true. It should be here false, right? The true is I1. That's false is I1. So imagine this statement in front of you already describe a multiplexer. So did you see how many ways you know I can define multiplexer? Yes. Is it clear? Let's make it more complicated. So what is complication I can make for you? It's easy. I can say that, you know, I would like to build a multiplexer. Listen to the story. A multiplexer, three inputs. One, two, three. Zero, one, two. I zero, I one, I two. And then I call this F. And my question to you, how many bits I would need here to uh, be a selector? If you have, if you have, that's, to, uh, that's 2300, okay? If you have a three inputs multiplexer, so the control, what is the size of the control bit will be? How many bits? Two, why? Because it needs to select up to three instead of only two. Basically, no, we take it into num log two number of what? Inputs. Yeah. So going to be log two, three. Anything above one, so going to be two bits. There is a fraction. I'm not going to take the fraction, so I will round it into the second. So going to be two. So in that case, going to be two bits. So pretty much, if I would like to build a circuit for this, I need to use my brain to think about something, which is what? It's basically a multiplexer, zero, one, and then gonna be CB, or, you know, uh, I0, I1, just open. Let's be consistent, so it's gonna be I0, I1, and here is a selector for it. And then the output of this will go in another multiplexer like this. And you know, F will be coming out and I3 will be there. And there's another selector, right? Let's name this to be D and let's name this to be E. And that's a zero and there's a one. So what I did in front of you, I built a circuit equivalent to the circuit coming from here using two, two X1 multiplexer. That makes sense? How I'm gonna do it in one one trick line using the conditional. So basically, I will say assign f is equivalent equivalent to what e because I'm looking for the true, right? The true and false, right? So I have zero and one. So what is my true here? Is the i three, right? So gonna be i three. But in that case, if I'm false, I will look to what to the controller of D, which is actually selecting between true or false, who is the true in that case will be B, I1, and the false of it is gonna be I0. That make sense? Did you see what I did? Hello? So oh yes, okay. So look, you know, the, you know, the condition, the true of it is I three, right? The false of it is a combination between something, and that's something I put it here in the brackets if you notice. And then I will go inside. The true of D is I one, and the false of D is I zero. So you can build multiples by multiple ways. You will achieve the same result. Sounds good? Okay. Can share with you this. That's not possible. Okay, I will share this with you by the end of the lecture.
<sighs> also, this I would share with you. I think I can share with you. Okay, let me tell you something. While you, from your point of view, I just would like you guys to tell me while loop, do you think while loop are uh, RTL or or the simulation uh, is taking off. Just your guess. Simulation, uh, RTL. Somebody have to give me an idea why this simulation and why this is RTL. Should I say it's an it's a simulation? You know why? Because you know for loop is dedicated and how many group of things that's gonna be repeated in ter in terms of number of blocks, right? While loop is open, so you cannot make open things on limited resources because no matter how many resources you have on that chip, is limited, right? You can get out of the chip and then you will cause an error. So pretty much what we're gonna learn also today is something that's called forever loop and while loop. So we have a while loop, forever loop, and those guys are what are pretty much the relation. Like also, there is a for loop just for simulation. So we have a for loop for simulation. We have a forever loop for simulation. We have a while loop for simulation. But then, you know, we have something that's called a for loop generate for RTM. And we already had the position var That makes sense? Should we switch now to the Vivado so we can try something? Everybody agree? Okay, let's turn off the screen here. Let me say stop broadcasting. And from there, I can say share my. Uh, and I take the chat here so I can see what we are talking about. Let me find you. Find you uh, I think I can find you. What we can do, we can just go into this one and we try to use the define. So I'm gonna show you something, okay? And in that thing, you know, I would like to show you the, the trick I'm gonna teach you now, which is about the define. Uh, define. 
max and then you can come and say it's a Did you see what I did? Hello. So what I did here, I defined something. I can make here a statement say this is a constant use. I defined something, it's called max, and I'm just comparing this max, right? One second. Before we do this, we're gonna go into the most important part. Here is the. Uh, <coughs> I need to. Can you guys now see my screen? I'm gonna build you the 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 thing. This is the example from the last week. Yes, 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 yes. We're gonna continue on it. So you know, I made the example about the counter thing. I need to combine many things together in one in one example. That's why I'm trying, you know, so you guys understand the whole thing from the beginning. Do you remember I told you about the trick of this counter thing uh, with 100 minutes, uh, 100 nanoseconds? This one. Here, do you remember this? The part we we're talking about for the clock divider? The one we started was right. So now I'm gonna, you know, I just use my handwriting. Now I'm gonna go into VHDL, uh, sorry, in the, in the Vivado using the Verilog so I can make a real example in front of you involving all the forevers and everything so you can understand in a system how it looks. Make sense? So we build the count, we build the clock divider using the PLL, we don't need it now. We build the clock divider also using the, the counters and you know, we will take every single bit into multiple so that you sign. Now I'm gonna build a circuit for the clock dividers and that's gonna be very important to you to understand. Using the MUX also and so on. So what is this? It's pretty much easy. I'm gonna move forward here and I make a circuit in front of you to show you that, you know, building the circuit is the most important part. Make sense? So pretty much your circuit is a counter. Do you remember when we start counting how many, right? And the counter is connected to the clock of the system clock. And it has a reset. And the value of it is called Q is going into what a comparator. Let's call this A and this B. And this guy is comparator. And the output of the comparator comparator, we are looking for the equivalency, how many equal. Then here, comparing with what constant. And the output of this will be enabling, enabling another uh, D flip flop. And the D flip flop is basically gonna be T flip flop, sorry. And then there's a same clock that we connected with that. And then, you know, I have the same reset we can be using. Then I'm gonna change the color and that would be the invertible output and here's the clock. So this is what that's basically enabled and the input would be flipped in front of the other. So imagine that circuit I was talking about, you know, how many of the small clock will be counting how many of the bigger clock, the circuit equivalency will be like. So you have a counter, this counter running with a system clock, and you are comparing with a certain value, and that value would be the equivalency. If the equivalency happened, you would be enabling a system which is basically taking the input as an output back and forth, so that will be generating the new desired clock. Let's see whether this circuit will be doing the work we are looking for or not. We don't know, right? Everybody agrees with me? But before I go into writing code, 
Everybody understand the circuit in front of them? Hello? Does this circuit make sense to everybody? The rest of the people. I'm a little bit confused. About which part? Tell me which part. Okay, the EN is the enabling system. So you know, if I remove the EN, what will happen? Those guys would be flipping each other every cycle, right? So the on will be off, the off will be on, the on will be off, the off will be on, and so on, right? Think about it. I reset the system. So that means, you know, the, the output is zero, right? Then the next cycle, that output is zero. It's going to be one, so that means the one will go here. Then the next cycle, that one will be here, then it will go back to be here zero. Then the third cycle will be one, it's going to be here, and then going to go back here to be one. And then you're gonna move on off. So you're gonna be make, building the on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off all the time. That's gonna be the new clock. But you know, who is deciding how much the duration of the on and off will be this constant with the count? Again, do you remember when we were building this one? And then we have the little clock was like this. Exactly. The, the, the constant will be deciding how much of this will be the on and off. That makes sense? So then you know how much on, how, many, how much off, because you know when you make on off, this guy would be tri tripling, right? So gonna go back and forth like this. Let's build the circuit. It would be more sense to see the circuit in front of you running on the simulation and even running on the board. While I'm building the, while I'm building the clock generator in the test bench, I'm going to use the forever loop so you can see it. While I'm putting the constant, I will be using my, uh, the define. So now we're going to learn the define and we're going to learn what the forever together. Then I will make another example with decoder for an instance and I will use uh, uh, for loop to cover the test, the test bench, and then you know we will be covering the wall, and that's it. That makes sense. Okay, now I will go ahead and just say stop. Stop this, and then I will say uh, here. And we remember the circuit. Everybody have the copy of the circuit with him, right? So I have a counter in front of me, and that counter have been built in front of me. So we have the reset. If the reset is equal high, the output will be equal zero. If not, you know, we already have OB plus one. Right, I don't need this one at the moment. I just want to share it with you. So basically I can just like go ahead and make it work. Now I just have the first piece, which is a counter, right? Now after that, what I need to do, I need to go into the build the circuit, right? Which is basically a clock divider. So yeah, so I would see here create design. And I would say create design, and I will call this clock divider, right? So I would say clock divider. And then I will just go ahead and say okay. And from there I say okay. And then you know what I'm expecting to have? I'm expecting to have clock as an input, and I have reset as an input, and also I have an output with this is called clock divider. So it's gonna be output, and I will call it what clock under and div, and I will just go ahead and see. From there, I can actually instantiate, if you want, the, the systems, if you want, or I can just build it from scratch. So basically I go here, I just say, okay, not that. And then, you know, of course, you know, this is something involving sequential circuit in the design. So end of the day, it's gonna be here, right? Right, because you know we need. Do you remember when I make this enable under the flip flop? Right, that's basically it has to be a ring. Two ways for me to define the constant. Two ways for me to define the constant. Somebody tell me. One of the ways is using the local parameter. 
or I can use the define. That makes sense? I can make it like this. I can come and say local param, and that's gonna be constant. And I put a value, and the value here is gonna be five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's an example, right? I make it a local parent and it's done. I actually make another one. I can make it here. I can stop this one. Yes, exactly. Going to be one megahertz. Or I can just go ahead and say, you know, like this. Define uh, constant equal five, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can make it either way, you know what I mean? Then I go here and say, build my circuit. So at the end of the day, I, I'm gonna build the whole thing inside each other. So I will say, you know, make a system, it's called reg, and it's called count. And it's gonna be 31. Okay, and then I will come and say always. Now I'm using behavior. Have you noticed? I'm gonna show you something more fun. You know, I build a circuit in front of in one statement, which is a positive edge of the clock, uh, or positive edge of the means that like this begin and right. And then I will say f. Reset what will happen, count will be equivalent to zero. Christian, have you noticed I'm using what the non blocking, right? Else, F. There is something called else, F. we are learning now. Count equal, equal, constant. And uh, minus one. I didn't like it. Why? Why is not liking it? So, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Did I wrote it wrong or something? Why? Uh, wait, let me see. Um, one second. What I can do, I can say 32 uh, U. Leave it like that, let's see what will happen. Anyway, else, and from the else, you can come and say, uh, if else, make count equal zero. And else count count and done. But I need to see what is the problem with this. Why it doesn't like it? It is the time. Uh, I'm gonna leave it for now and then I will come to it. Can you guys see what I did now? Everybody follow me, what I did? Hello? Is it clear? So if you noticed, you know, I, instead of using counters and building all of these things, what I did, I came into the conclusion saying that, you know, if I reset is zero, but then, you know, if they are equal to each other, be sure that to put the count is equal zero. But uh, if not, Start counting until you will reach the point of the constant, and then you flip. 
So what I did here, I basically built something that's called, um, I built my counter, right? Now I need to build the mechanism of generating the clock divider, which is basically describe the comparators output. So you know, he describe, describe the flip flop uh, with the comparator process. So the, another always block that show you how actually behavior is really easy. So if you do always positive edge or positive edge, you can making that code asynchronous. No, it's basically, you know, that was saying that actually if the clock happened, you have to look still to the positive edge of the reset. You understand what I'm saying? So again, you know, if the clock happened, if the positive edge of the clock happened, oh yeah, you can consider this asynchronous, yes. Because it, that's true, because you know what you're saying that if the positive edge of the clock happened, still look the process, or if the positive edge of the reset happened, still you look to the process. You understand what I'm saying? So now we're gonna say here, pause edge of the clock, or pause edge of the reset. And then we come here and begin. Still, if reset is high, what will happen? The target the clock, it will be equivalent to uh, zero. Then you come and say else, else f count equal equal, and then say const const minus one uh, minus one like this. What we have in clock div equivalent. Huh, somebody tell me. Huh? Look, we use what? We use the operators we learn, right? Which is the div. Do you remember when we made the enable signals? You know what is the enable signal? Hey, where is the enable signal? Somebody tell me. The enable signal is basically when you say count is equal count uh, count some minus one. This is the enable signal. Do you guys agree? And then the input was flipped to the output, right? So basically the output is called clock div, going backward to the input to be inverted. Do you remember the circuit? So that's basically, you know, you can go ahead and see this is the enable equivalent in the circuit I draw. Sounds good? Then you come here and say else, else what? They're equivalent to each other if you want. Equivalent to then yeah. So what I built in front of you, a circuit actually performing one megahertz exactly as uh, Rohit mentioned. Uh, that makes sense. It's actually it's not one. It's one hertz, I believe. That's one hertz. Uh, how many zeros I have here? Yes, seven. So that means on, off, so gonna be a million. Yeah, it's a one hertz. So this is a circuit. This circuit performing one hertz out of the 100 mega Conversion. Sounds good? Is it clear to everybody? Hello? Hello? We can play with, we need to see it visualized, right? By our eyes, right? So in that case, I can just go ahead and say, I need to build my own test bench. And that will help before we will go ahead and change into the uh, deploying on the chip. So in that case, we can say, you know, divider clock dev TB test bench. And in that case, we can go ahead. We said, you know, this bench doesn't have anything. And then, you know, we can just take the play. And then, uh, 
you can just go ahead and make it set as a top. And then you know you can go here in the bench and say you know, this is our TV as well. One second, so we we'll over here and then you know, we'll go <sighs> And we'll say what block TV. But sounds good. Do you guys still remember this stuff or not? Everybody remember this bench or not? So the input, it should be rig or wire. Let's see if he doesn't know. Input should be rig or wire. It should be rig, clock TV, rig, uh, RST TV, and wire, uh, plug this. All right. I'm sorry. Shouldn't be. Have you noticed I made a mistake and I want you guys to tell me what was the mistake? Huh. Let's see. What was the mistake? What is the mistake I have done now to see whether that you're going to follow me or not? Uh, you name the input the same as your instantiated um, provider? Uh, you're right. Exactly. You shouldn't do this. No, exactly. This one it shouldn't be the same name. So what we can say, clock dev uh, instantiation. That's it. Right? You cannot name signals with the name of the instantiation. You cannot. Now, the time for using the new, the new uh, statement we are learning, which is called what? The forever, right? So we're gonna learn forever. So before, before, you know, I used to make the initial block like this, right? Begin, and then I say uh, clock TB, equal one and then I say here end and then I go here always always and then I say here begin and and from there I say block is equivalent to block uh, you guys do you remember this or no Yes. Yes. Now we're going to use something else, which is called what? Forever. Forever. So let me just take it and grab it in front of you. Where is my slides? So equivalent of this, I can just go ahead and make it like this. I can completely stop on it and say, you know, toggle comments. So that means I comment it. Now I'm gonna write it in a different way. I will just write here. Look, and one one initial block, initial begin clock is equal one b one or one and then you know i would say forever forever um five clock is equal to the and then you know it's a, did you see what i did now of course i made a mistake that's called tv and that's called tv 
and that's also cool. Any questions so far? Do you see what I did now? So instead of having always block like this with initial block to initialize the clock, and then after that, you know, we will make the continuation using always block. Now we instead we just have one initial block initially putting the clock with one, and after that it will automatically take the the uh, forever thing to make it like running on off on off. We need to see whether this thing is working or not actually. So we're gonna go here and run some. There is an error. You guys agree? Why? Because we didn't put the initialization for the reset, right? So what we can do, we can come here and say initial began and and from there we can come and say reset pb is equal equal uh, one and then after a cycle make reset pb is equal zero because we are sequential circuit so at the end of the day we need something to be running forever and there we can just say after how many uh one two three four five six seven eight maybe we just say finish we might actually finish before than that because you know we need to go into the simulation setting and let's see what we have in the settings, simulation time, that should be available. And then we go here and run simulation. See what we have. Let's see what happened. It's still the clock divider didn't come out because you know. We are making a huge parameter thing. So what we can do, we can go back into the clock divider and make this number smaller to see the influence, right? So like one, two, three, one, two, every 5,000. Did you see that? Everybody follow me? Hello. Hello. If you go a stop here, you can get the count value and you can say save and save it. And then I say save. And then, you know, I can say, you know, run from scratch and then put your value. Run. 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 You can look at very carefully here, and you know, you get the value. Uh, did you see that? The counter, start counting. Everybody follow me, right? Hello. The counter is counting here into radix, sun sign, and it's pretty much. We can make it more achievable, like, you know, maybe after 50 or. 50 so you guys still can see it right this kind take some time which is fine okay so look here so I, if i grab this a little bit grab it. i need to see the time difference here right so i can just go ahead and say eat here And then I can come here and say stop radix. Look what happened here, right? It's counting here 10, 20, whatever, 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 whatever. So in a 50 count, each count 10 uh, nanoseconds on was represented. And then, you know, if you go back into the second representation here, you stop here and you stop there, you will find the same value, right? Look, 
it's gone from zero to the sorry no 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 the one is can always be a little bit silly uh, let me add this be a little bit silly and make it in a set of 50 make it five just to see what is this so you know you can say run simulation Look, here is five. One second. I'm in lecture. Something happened. Yeah, let me let me fill it up. Okay. Okay. So look, now it's what five for fifteen nanoseconds, right? That, because you know five times ten nanoseconds. Everybody agree? Now I need to see also the off. Look at the off. The off also can the same thing. Look. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Look, also five nanoseconds. So did you see what I'm doing now or not? The, the example in front of us, we made 50 nanoseconds off, 50 nanoseconds on, right? So that means 100 nanoseconds uh, in a set of 10 nanoseconds. So that means, you know, we dropped ourselves from what to what? From 100 megahertz to 10 megahertz. Does that make sense? Is it clear to everybody? Hello? Please, if it's not clear, you know, stop me and, you know, I would be more than happy to assist you. Ashley, is it clear? Ashley, perfect. Trust in it's clear, okay. So, Khaled, is it clear? Khaled. Brian. Okay, Shad, is it clear? So we learned today multiple things, right? We learn the forever for the simulation. We learn uh, how can it make the clock divider. So the count does does reset here when clock is low. Where you are talking about? I mean, it's a positive edge. That means you know here is a positive edge. We count a positive edge, no? Positive. Change is happening positive. Age. That's why we say positive. Age. Yeah, it's zero to four, five, right? Just look, you know, I asked him to go five. No, I said five. So it means five, you're going to be zero, one, two, three, four. Let's say ten, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make sense? Because, you know, in circuit, we don't count from one, we count from zero. Okay, so. Super good, I love it. Now, I won't show you the define. I don't know why the define is not working. We need to fix it, right? To make it work and it looks really cool, right? So we need to see why define is meant. So why define you are meant? So if I say define, one second, let me see. So how can I make it? No, it's not like this. It's, it's a different sign. Uh, hey, define, and then you know, con. Let's call it max, and make it here five, and see what is the problem. So here max. Why? Why? Here is the time. I swear is the time. Mm. Oh, 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 I remember, I remember. Oh, Shaiza, I'm sorry. You have to do it like that when you call it. Now it's working. Did you see? Okay, guys. So, you know, I make it define here, max, and the value, right? Look, when I call it, I have to use the same operand I use here for define. Now it's working. Sorry. Let's run the simulation, see whether it's gonna be some simulation or not. 
And if there's off wife, let's make it 10 to see the difference. So make it here run, simulate, and yes, this slide, this card. So this time I'm expecting to count from zero to what? Huh? I will tell you why, but you know, tell me. We are counting from zero to what? Exactly, but have you noticed I made a, I made a big, big mess, <laughs> right? Because the definition came in a wrong way. So you have to stay here, uh, 32, um, have you noticed counting have been changed really bad Let's see counting to what to what, what is it? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. The counter is being crazy now. Why? I need to sleep. I need to go here and I need, I need to call Max. Max. Maybe we can go ahead and make a trick and stay. Uh, wait, we can make a trick. And this trick we can call here local parameter equal max. Yeah, work. Did you see what happened now? No. Now it's zero to nine, right? If you notice, I made a trick. I put define here because normally when you are building a bigger, 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 bigger system, right? So end of the day, you need to put all of the attributes and all of the constants you need in the top of the file. You can make it include actually. Do you remember include in C? So in C, you have include and you have the file, right? So basically, you know, you need to change all the parameters and in include, and then, you know, automatically the file will figure it out, right? That's the same trick. But in a way that it, it will be more organized, especially if you are uh, verifying, because, you know, there is something that's called an FPGA or even ASIC, a verification. You know, how are you gonna verify? You say, oh, I look to the attributes and the parameters in a file dedicated for it, and then, you know, I will go there, I will make a change, and then, you know, automatically the processor will be changed. That makes sense? Pretty much if you would like to use Max directly into the operation, you should use it in simulation. But I made a trick to use it in also an RTL by calling it inside the local param. So the local param is equal to Max, and then it will go directly there. I'm just tricking the system. This is the way to trick system, okay? That makes sense? But pretty much, you know, you guys, while you're building, you could make it with a local parent, direct, put the value in the local parent. Sounds good? Okay. So what we learned today, we learned the define, we learned the forever, we learned the third way of the clock divider. We made a scan on all possibilities for blocking, non-blocking, all the tricks about white behavior, white structure, and all of these things. Everybody agrees with me?
And there is another loop which is called repeat. So let me share with you the screen about it. Stop. And then I will go here. There, which is called repeat. So the repeat is called a repeat loop. Repeat is a sequential statement multiple times and it's more into, uh, into the dispatch. So I can just go ahead and say repeat. And I put here maybe max define or something. And then I begin and then end. And then I put here whatever. Like, you know, x is equal x plus one. Like, what does it mean? Do this operation eight times. If this is an equal eight. Sounds good. There is also something like printf in C, but this is also simulation. Don't mix between simulation and what RTL. There is something that's called display. Display. Let's let's have example on display. In the in the in the in the RTL, what's called in the simulation? So I will just give you one stop. I say share screen. And I just wait. Just kind of share, and I just write here um, like this. Um, Display uh, um, reset. And maybe you can make it like this. Uh, reset uh, value equal, and I want it to be um, by one. Uh, and I can just it like that, and then comma, and I say re. What I'm saying here, can you please read me a reset value? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I can just say here, you know, go ahead and just do a simulation like that. So you're gonna see it in the console. Did you see this ticket console? I will show you now. No. Look, did you see what happened now? Should be inside the console, but I don't know why it didn't come up. Maybe it didn't like it. Oh, no, 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 it came, it came, but you know what we can do? We can go bench here and also put it under this one. So that means read it after you make it, read it after 10, read it after, uh, read it all the time. So you know, I read, let's see. Look at the value here, look. Reset value is equal, can you see in the bottom? Everybody saw it? See, reset value is equal one, and after that it's equal zero. Can you see it, it's written there. Who did that display? Okay. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm gonna share with you some documents also on the, in, the, in, the, in an area for the, I think I already shared with you something, which is basically the, the thing that I was going in the timing, right? When I said that set up that whole time, the rest of it is basically memory and some looping things so you can see it. and I will find some more useful uh, documents and PowerPoints I already made long time ago so you can look at it with the video and please watch the videos that would be important for you. Another thing that you know you might also practice if you are really worried about the, the finals or the, sorry the quiz. You know do you remember the book chapter one and chapter two you can look at all the problems in the back so that would be fair enough for you to go for the 
for that quiz. That quiz is going to be really easy. Like it comes just like a very easy, easy thing. You know? If you have any questions, you know, please don't hesitate. Any questions so far? Any question? No. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. So I would like to thank you guys for the time and effort. You know, you do your best, and you know, the lab it should be really straightforward. Okay. The lab is basically the coder was was a clock divider, and you already learn a lot of things about clock divider. Just pick up at the the right lectures read it very well and you just connect everything it will be working perfectly fine watch the videos please as well. um professor? yes professor, i got a question about the lab um the fist what is the fist supposed to do again what what is the switch, fist switch? The switch so let me see you know uh, maybe we, we let me see where is the video and we can turn it on and watch it together yeah. It's in the chorus. Of course, was in the 7300. And, uh, that was the third lab, right? Yes. Okay. Turn it on. Everybody can see the video? Hi, everybody. So today I would like to talk to you about the new lab assignment. So, you can't see the video. Nobody can see it. Oh, one second. Let me see. Let me see. One second. One second. One second. We'll solve the problem. Everybody can see it now. You can see it, Chad. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-two speed, right? So that means you know how many switches to represent the thirty-two speed part switch. You see what I'm doing? Is it clear, guys? What is the video? I request from you. You can ability. Yeah, got it. Thank you. For the rest of the people, is it clear or should I draw with a what? I just have one question. Sure. Do we need a reset? Because you don't state in the video if we need it or not. Well, of course, you would need it. This is a question, sir. Okay. That makes sense. Actually, I made it into the bus button here. No, so. Sure. I mean, I'm gonna draw, but it's supposed to be you. You know, if I if I draw it to you, that means you know, I I fix it. But okay, I'll do it. That's an exception this time. Look at this, Daniel. So now you have a decoder, right? You're gonna build a combinational. So you're gonna build it um, structure, right? They're going to be here four, and then you know, here is 16 output, right? Those are connected to LEDs. It's going to be four, 16. Then you know, here is the, uh, the, the switches, right? You can build here a counter, and the clock is set. And then the counter, it has to be have connected to clock divider, having five switches select the speed. That's it. Is it clear now? Daniel? Clear to everybody? Okay. Don't forget this bench is important, okay? 50% of the demo, 50% uh, of the grade on demo, 
25% on the power uh, requirement, 25% on the questions and the report and how you are uh, representing your data. Okay? If you guys don't have any other questions, you know, I would like to thank you for the time and efforts. You know, do your best. And I'm proud of you. And I hope everything will be fine with, uh, with all of you. Sounds great. Thank you guys, God bless you, thank you. Stay safe.